Alright everyone, I'm back again with another video. It's been a long while, I know. I apologise, but today, or tonight rather, I've got a very special video for all you guys. Now, as you'll know, I'm a big Daredevil fan, and I'm really hyped for season 3 of the Netflix show. And it's coming out tonight. I'm so hyped. So, I thought I would do something special, uh, since it's coming out. Now, originally, I was going to do, like, a wee... Um, just a video talking about the show, but I thought that was a little bit too, I don't know, generic and, I don't know. I want to do a little video talking about this right here, Daredevil again, sorry, Born Again, my hand was in the way. Very special uh, storyline from the books. Um, now, if no one, if anyone here that has watched this video uh, has never read a Daredevil comic, that's, that's okay, don't worry, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need, I'll explain it for you. Um, but I just wanted to make a little video uh, talking about one of my favourite, uh, not just favourite Daredevil storylines, but favourite storylines in a comic book in general. Like, this is it's really fucking good. And in all seriousness, I thought it was a little bit appropriate because not only is it Daredevil, but um, Season 3, from what, from what I've gathered, is loosely based on this. Not entirely, of course. Um, they do need to make uh, adjustments and whatever else. But they, they are going to be taking elements from it and I'm actually quite excited to see how they adapt certain areas of it or certain parts of it, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I'm hyped. In the 1980s, which is quite a long time ago, um, the Daredevil comic book uh, was doing... From what, I, from what I know, it wasn't doing that well. Um, it was nearly going to... In fact, at one point, it was about to get cancelled and then steps in a writer that people might have heard of by the name of Frank Miller. Now, Frank Miller, of course, has done many other things in comics. He, he did The Dark Knight Returns, which is one of the highly regarded as one of the best uh, Batman stories of all time. Um, he also did, uh, what else did he do? Uh, Sin City, which is another thing he did years later. Um, 300, um, what was the other thing? Ronin, the uh, Japanese sort of like samurai type book which you know, obviously ties ties a little bit into Daredevil as well. But the place he really got his big start was on Daredevil. And he wrote the book for, I'm fairly sure, about three, four-ish years. And then he went away and then he came back a few years later and he did this storyline. And uh, this is highly regarded as his, well, one of his best works. I personally think it's his best. I've read The Dark Knight Returns. It's a good storyline, but I do honestly prefer this. And I'll do... I'll do that, maybe in another video I'll talk about the Dark Knight Returns um, and other stuff, but essentially, he's done some great stuff. Uh, now, like I says, he, came, he went away and came back. Um, he went away for a while and then came back and did this uh, book. And there's a lot in this book that, you know, it's sort of like, the, a lot of people see it as the definitive Daredevil story. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of stuff, um, there's a lot of other stories as well, I would say. Uh, are just as good uh, or uh, just as true to the character but this storyline is just it's something else there's something unique about this one so basically in the story it opens up with one of the most fucking depressing looking opening pages of all time and i love it and i'm going to get into the artwork in a moment but just look at this page and tell me this is this is this is just how you start a story so it sets the tone perfectly daredevil's old lover girlfriend whatever uh, Karen Page, who had left the story a long time ago and it came back in, uh, is now a, a junkie and she's fucking taking drugs and shit. And she's basically, she's run out of money, but she's still addicted to drugs. So she gets absolutely desperate and what does she do? She gives away Daredevil's identity. And eventually... Wilson Fisk, who is the main bad guy, uh, if you haven't seen the show or whatever, he's Daredevil's arch nemesis, ends up finding out who he really is. And who is he? Matt Murdock, the lawyer, of course. That's a little bit problematic when you're a lawyer and you're also going out at night fighting bad guys, you know, beating people up essentially. It's kind of against the law, if you know what I mean. So um, instead of outright exposing him, however, he subtly manipulates things um, around Matt's life so that he breaks him down bit by bit, slowly and eventually com almost completely it's like a complete 
destruction of Matt's character. And even in the first issue alone, a lot of shit happens to him. He loses his job, um, you know, loses all his money, I'm fairly sure, as well. And his apartment blows up in the last fucking page, and it is just... It's devastating, so it is. And then things go on, he tries to fight uh, the kingpin himself, fails, he ends up getting, you know, beat up and left in a taxi and left for dead, essentially. He has to sort of come back from all this and sort of the, the, the later part of the story, like, it's sort of how he comes back from the brink of death. So it is, like, there's a lot of symbolism in the story, I'm going to touch upon that later, so I'm. But essentially, the story is, it's one of the darkest fucking Daredevil stories. Uh, that I've ever read. So as it's not the, I don't know if it's the darkest, but it's definitely one of the darkest. Uh, definitely one of the darkest superhero stories. Like, uh, and and the interesting thing is, he doesn't really spend a lot of the time as Daredevil. Like, I think he spends a little bit in the first issue uh, fighting crime, whatever, being a vigilante, and then at the end of the story, you know. But like most of the story, it's not really a Daredevil story. It's more. A Matt Murdock story, and I think that's one of the things that sort of separates it from a lot of the other story arcs out there. Um, it's really a story about a human going through all this crap. Not a superhero, a human, you know, just a man, you know. Uh, something I really want to touch upon is the artwork in this story. Now, the artist that drew all the issues here, David Mazzucchelli, one of the best artists that I've ever seen. Like his, I'm going to show some of his artwork uh, throughout the video. Some of it just looks absolutely amazing. I'll go through some of it, so some of my some of my absolute favourite uh, panels or pages. Obviously you have the opening page, I've touched upon that before. There's this lovely page at the start of the story where Daredevil's just running about in the snow. Or it might be the rain actually, it looks like snow. I'm fairly sure it's snow but it could be either or. This The, the story takes place around about Christmas, you know. It's not a Christmas themed story whatsoever. But it takes place in the winter so it probably is snow. Uh, it looks gorgeous so it does. There's the explosion of the apartment and then the shot of uh, the fire and Matt's uh, sunglasses. They just... It just looks beautiful, so it does. There's the shot of him holding his costume in the wreckage. There's a shot of the kingpin just standing over the city. Uh, and he's coloured purple, which... If, if this was just, you know, if, if there was no stylistic tone to this, it would look a bit odd, but it fits so well. Contrast of the city being light blue and whitish, it, it makes him stand out and it really makes him seem like the, more, the, the most powerful figure in the story, you know, watching over the city. There's this really iconic page, and it's an entire page of just one panel of Matt just back from the brink of death, and he's lying on the ground. He's barely a shell of himself at this point. And he's just lying there and there's a nun just sitting above him, resting over him, taking care of him, you know, just watching over him like a guardian angel in a way. You've got this iconic page that opens up one of the, the issues where Matt's just lying on a, a bed in a hospice with nuns surrounding him. Just look at it and tell me, <laughs> tell me it doesn't look like Christ on the cross, you know, the crucifix. I mean, there's obviously a lot of symbolism in this. And you can see it right here in a lot of the, the artwork, a lot of the, the, the ways they position Matt, the, the ways they position the other characters. And this shot is so iconic, they even used it in, in, in the very last shot of the Defenders to, you know, to, to foreshadow what would come in this next season. The book also features one of my absolute favourite pieces of artwork in a comic book, period. This panel here of Daredevil standing in the, in the fire. Whenever I think of the character of Daredevil, this is always the first image that comes to my head. I don't know what it is, but it just, it perfectly represents the character, so it does. And even though it literally is just a, a still image, you know, it's not, not, not too dynamic, it just looks fucking fantastic, so it does. And going by a lot of the artwork in comic books these days, like, there's, there's still good artwork in comic books these days, and I'm not going to say, well, oh, if only, you're, you know, it's all shit now. But there genuinely is a lot of poor or mediocre artwork being put in comic books. It just makes you appreciate artists like Mazzucchelli so much more, so it does. I feel like I've talked a lot, a, not a lot about it. Uh, I hope this has been a, a good video. Um, I hope you have all enjoyed this video. I know it's a very different video from what I've done before. Um, 
I hope it's. I feel like I've rambled on a lot, and I hope this isn't. Too, I hope this is a a well balanced video, and I hope it's a, a good because I've never really done a review type video for a comic book. Maybe I feel like in the past I've done stuff like movies and whatever else, but never a comic book. Essentially, I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's honestly been really enjoyable just talking about this. I mean, I'm 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 very excited for the TV show, of course. But um, just reading this story again and talking about it, it's making me even more excited than just thinking about it. I just hope it's as good. I mean, I don't expect it. Like I says, it's it's sort of loosely based on this, but I hope it. I hope it's as good as the first two seasons at least, um, because it is a great show. And I might possibly do a review of the show uh, itself, but I I'll, it'll probably be a while if I do that, um, because I usually take my time with these Netflix things. I, I don't I don't watch them all in a day. But if I do do a review of it, then it'll probably be a few weeks away. Hopefully it'll be just as good as uh, as any video I've done. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed and uh, bye.